Hi, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It's Tuesday, August 19th, 2025. Hurricane Aaron dominates uh, the headlines right now for impacts along the East Coast. And it does look like while during the day today, uh, we saw some dry air trying to get into Aaron to disrupt some of its circulation. Uh, that mid-level shear is now um, weakening and weakening pretty substantially. We can see a little bit more of that circulation uh, reappearing on the left-hand side of the storm. This update is for the All Hazards Consortium, the sensitive information sharing environment where we share information across platforms uh, from private sector liaisons within state emergency operations centers uh, to private sector organizations that move people, goods, and services across the country, particularly when power is out. We've got to get those utility vehicles across state boundaries and also into the damage area so we can get power restored to you as soon as possible. Well, there's the picture from 22,300 miles up. We have Hurricane Aaron. Aaron has weakened during the day, uh, but the wind field is expanding. This is the critical point that I'm going to be making during this update, and this is going to be a shorter one than usual. Uh, I've been in Washington, D.C. this afternoon having meetings uh, just got back, and so now we're putting together this update. Uh, uh, but I do want to communicate the seriousness of this storm, even though you may have heard during the day that it decreased in intensity, went from Category 4 to 3 to now Category 2, and I want to show you what it looks like. Let's take this full screen, and I'll show you a little bit more details about Hurricane Aaron. Uh, you can see it spinning around here. There's a little bit of dry air on this side. You can see the outflow is very good to the north, to the east, to the south, just uh, to the west, not so good. But now it's regaining its strength. This is a very powerful storm, a very large hurricane, and it is going to impact the beaches uh, from uh, northern Florida through Georgia all the way up to the Outer Banks where a tropical storm warning and storm surge warning is now in effect all the way up to the Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts coastlines. This is going to be a major issue through the rest of the week this week. Look at this. This is drier air to the north. There's some drier air that was uh, getting into the western periphery of the storm, but now it's fighting it off, and you can see this outflow cirrus shield really expanding, and then these uh, very vigorous thunderstorms blowing up around the center of the storm. Let's take a look at the latest statistics from the National Hurricane Center in Miami. Uh, this is as of 5 p.m. today. Tropical Storm Watch has been extended northward from the Outer Banks of North Carolina. I'll give you those details here in just a moment. The storm located at 5 o'clock. Look at this, 615 miles southwest of Bermuda and 615 miles to the south-southeast of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. It is right in the middle of both land masses there, uh, but it's headed closer to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Maximum sustained winds, 105 miles per hour. That's a Category 2 on the Saffir-Simpson scale. Minimum central pressure, 958 millibars. And the movement now to the north-northwest at about 10 miles per hour. We'll get another update from the National Hurricane Center at 8 o'clock, a more significant update at 11 o'clock Eastern Time tonight. So there are the latest statistics for Hurricane Aaron. Now what I want to do is zoom in just a little bit because uh, I want to show you what it looks like from the one minute imagery, which has been pretty impressive. Look at this. This is one minute imagery of the Goes East uh, from the Goes East satellite looking right down uh, into Hurricane Aaron. Let's do a little bit of drawing for you. These are those new thunderstorms uh, that we're seeing develop along the uh, eye around the center of the circulation. These are also thunderstorms that are extending out this way and this way. Uh, just we don't have, we have a little lack of thunderstorm activity right here. Probably an open eye wall right now, uh, but that is likely to close again uh, as these thunderstorms start to wrap around the eye. 
Uh, there are other big thunderstorms uh, happening outside in these spiral bands. Uh, these have very, very heavy rain associated with them. Let me move the satellite image a little bit uh, further here uh, to the north, and you can see these thunderstorms. That's what's going on. More thunderstorms erupting. The sun is setting, so it's going to start to get dark here shortly. Uh, but I also want to move the satellite image here to the west. And look at that. You don't have to get too far away from the center of the storm to see high, thin cirrus clouds and sunshine. But the waves, the waves are really what we're going to have to deal with. Here are some of the uh, eastern Bahama Islands still getting spiral bands coming through. These look like showers and storms, probably look beautiful from a picture standpoint. But then they drop gusty winds and heavy rains, and then it clears up once again. Let's widen out again. Uh, to uh, this uh, satellite image, and I'll show you what it looks like from the vantage point uh, and the uh, vulnerability of the East Coast. Okay, so I've widened out here, and you can see Aaron uh, spinning. Uh, there's that uh, one outflow boundary uh, with some heavy showers just moving into the northern Bahamas here. Uh, you can see some strong thunderstorms on Florida's southwest uh, peninsula here. Uh, the uh, outer banks of North Carolina right in here, now under a tropical storm warning. Uh, but what I want to really point out here is something pretty spectacular. I'm going to draw this uh, with my uh, pen first. But tropical storm force winds extend out here uh, almost uh, 400 miles across. By the time that Aaron gets into this position and is located right around here, Tropical storm force winds are expected to extend 500 miles across. That is going to create serious, significant, damaging waves on the Outer Banks of North Carolina and significant and potentially damaging waves from Maryland's coast all the way up to New Jersey and potentially Long Island. Let me show you what I mean by going over to GeoCollaborate here. Uh, and point out uh, some things that are really pretty impressive. Okay, so here's GeoCollaborate. It's, I know it looks a little bit busy, right? But I'm going to point some things out here, uh, and hopefully this will make a lot of sense to you. So out here, this is the radius of maximum winds for tropical storm force right now over Hurricane Aaron. Okay, you can see the center, and look at this. Remember those wave drifters that I talked about, the Hurricane Hunter aircraft dropped some new wave drifters right in the center of the storm short time ago. And now we can query these and show you what it looks like. Take a look at this observation. Let's get in a little bit closer. I'm going to turn off the drawing here and we'll get a little bit closer uh, to the center of the storm here. Okay, I want you to see the Bahamas, and also here's Florida right over here. Um, this buoy, this wave drifter right in the center of the storm, look at this, 20, almost 21-foot waves right now coming out of the center of the storm, emanating out from the storm. 21-foot waves, the period of 12 seconds. That is a very powerful wave. These wave drifters down just to the south of the center, 23-foot waves. This is really incredible, folks. These are buoys that were dropped out of the uh, Hurricane Hunter aircraft today. So we could measure these winds and also the storm wave-driven height. 13.7-foot waves to the south. And this one even further to the south, 23.3 feet. So we have a chaotic sea. Remember what Dr. Ellen Prager said yesterday. We have a very chaotic and confused sea underneath of the hurricane. But it's emanating waves, a lot of waves uh, that are going out from the center, out this way. Waves are going out this way and out this way towards the Bahamas. So these waves are battering waves. When they get to the shallow land, they rise up, and uh, they are very, very powerful. Okay, I'm going to clear this out here because I want to back out a little bit with GeoCollaborate and show you these other 
wave drifters. Remember that the students for University of North Carolina, Wilmington, uh, went out on the RV Cape Hatteras and dropped these wave buoys right here. Okay, these are wave buoys right here, and we can check and see what the waves are doing right now. Ten and a half foot waves. These waves, once again, are emanating out from the storm. So they're headed towards the North Carolina coast. They're emanating this way and being driven this way towards the coastline, even over towards uh, Charleston. Here's Myrtle Beach right in here. These waves are picking up. And as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to go just a little bit further to the north here and show you uh, what I'm talking about from these waves uh, from the standpoint of the Outer Banks, North Carolina. Ocracoke Island is being evacuated uh, right now as well as Hatteras Island. And I also highlighted here on the map, Rodanthe, North Carolina. This is one of the furthest out uh, parts of the Outer Banks that sticks out other than uh, Hatteras Island there. Just a few minutes ago, recorded a webcam of the waves that are already impacting of Rodanthe, North Carolina. So that's right up here. They are in the tropical storm warning, also in a storm surge warning. The outer clouds of Aaron aren't visible yet from the Outer Banks, uh, but they are approaching. These are high thin cirrus clouds. Let me show you what that uh, webcam looked like looking at the beaches. And this is uh, what it looks like. This is moments ago. Uh, in Rodanthe, North Carolina, and you can see the pier there. Look at the waves that are coming in. And when I talk about a wave period, this is what I'm talking about. Um, you can see the waves coming in. So here's one stretch of waves. Here's another stretch of waves. The time it takes for those waves to pass around uh, one point is the period of the waves. So you can see this one coming in here. If I draw this line here, we say 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009. So roughly between nine, eight and nine seconds is the period of these waves. And they're only going to get more powerful and larger. It looks like we could see wave heights of and we're talking waves breaking on the beach when Hurricane Aaron gets closer tomorrow evening uh, of 20 to 25 feet. That is going to do tremendous destruction to the houses that are right on the beach, not only in Rodanthe, but also on the entire outer banks of North Carolina. This is a serious and dangerous situation. If you are in any properties on the Outer Banks, you really need to leave, especially if you're right on the beach. You know how those waves ride up. It is going to be, you're going to be cut off in uh, the Outer Banks if you're on Route 12, which gets substantially overwashed uh, in these kind of storms. And this is going to be a long duration storm over multiple tide cycles. Uh, the hurricane is not moving very quickly at all. And then those dangerous wave conditions will move to the north. Okay, I want to go just a little bit further up the coast right now to uh, Ocean City, Bethany Beach, Delaware. These are the tide charts for tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. And I just want to point this out uh, fairly quickly. Um, for those of you not uh, aware, this area right here where the red dot is, is Bethany Beach, Delaware. And this is Ocean City, Maryland right here. Uh, Bethany Beach is just north of Fenwick Island. Here's the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay where the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel is. A spectacular uh, construction uh, there for the Transportation Department uh, connecting uh, Virginia and the Lower Eastern Shore of Virginia. And the biggest naval base in the world is right in here uh, in Norfolk, uh, Virginia and Hampton Roads uh, right in here. So you can see the clouds from Hurricane Aaron coming up. Uh, these are the tides on the right-hand side. These are the tides for Tuesday, August 29th in Bethany Beach, Delaware, for Wednesday 
and Thursday. Uh, and so these are the times of high tide starting tomorrow, 4.57 a.m. and then 5.23 p.m. Uh, this is when we're going to see potential erosion, beach erosion starting, even though the hurricane is not going to be impacting uh, Bethany Beach, Delaware tomorrow. The clouds will be on the increase, but tomorrow it's really going to be uh, battering the outer banks of North Carolina uh, into Wednesday. And then the high tide at Bethany on Wednesday, August 20th, 6.02 a.m. and 6.23 p.m. Uh, these are when the tides are going to get quite high uh, because of the added wind and wave action. I'll come down here to Thursday, August 21st, and here's the high tide once again, 6.58, 6.58 in the morning. And then 7, let me move this over to the side here, 7.15 p.m. is the high tide for Thursday. These are going to be very destructive high tides in Bethany Beach, Delaware uh, on Thursday. There is no tropical storm watch or warning in effect there, but the wind field will be expanding. Okay, let's go back now to GeoCollaborate. Uh, because I do want to point out something here. This is the satellite imagery. The clouds that have been over Maryland and Virginia and the Lower Eastern Shore and Delaware today are not associated with Hurricane Aaron. These clouds are from a frontal system and a low pressure uh, that formed in the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay and just kind of sat and spun there today. Very weak, but did cause some rain and thunderstorms on Virginia's Lower Eastern Shore with a small town named Exmoor receiving over 7.6 inches of rain. Today, there was uh, flash flood warnings issued in that part of Virginia. One last thing I want to show you before I end this briefing is the anticipated or forecast wind field from Hurricane Aaron. This is the wind field right now. You can see it has enlarged since yesterday. I've turned off all of the buoy observations. I've turned off the gliders, the Argo floats, because I just want to focus on what it looks like when we turn on the forecast wind radii for this storm. Look how large and wide the wind field gets for Hurricane Aaron. These are different forecast time periods, and this is what we're looking at. And I'm going to zoom in here as the storm gets close to the outer banks. You can see the storm center is going to be way off here, way off the coast. But I'm going to measure, I'm going to do this in GeoCollaborate, I'm going to measure the width of this wind field when it touches uh, the outer banks right here. Okay, so this is this particular point, close that, and extend this line all the way over to this point where the hurricane or tropical storm force winds end right through the storm. That distance is 549.8 miles. 550 miles wide is the tropical storm wind field. Now just think how much water that moves from this standpoint. So that's the update on this evening of August 19th. We'll have a more comprehensive update during the day tomorrow, but I did want to give you these changes and show you that fantastic buoy data that was dropped in the center of the storm by the Hurricane Hunter aircraft today for another research experiment that they're doing. Uh, but we saw these buoys show up in GeoCollaborate within 20 minutes of them splashing into the sea. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. I appreciate you uh, watching this update. We'll be back again tomorrow. Please watch out for yourself and watch out for your neighbors. They really do appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow.